Hello guys, Squirrel here. Been playing around with the patch and I thought I'd bring you a quick video with some of my findings on day one on the PC. I shall make some more videos over the next few days as I do further testing. So I thought I'd start out by looking at the the recall side of things. So I cracked out the LMG, slapped the bipod on it. Now, you know, we didn't use the bipod very much before because it was a bit of a pain in the ass to deploy. So I picked a nice little spot over here on Grand Bazaar and decided to shoot that wall over there which is quite a nice thing to shoot because it's about medium range and it has nice blocks on it. So as you can see on the full auto, this is without the bipod of course, you can see the recoil, the bullet, the bullet span is immense, hardly anything hits. In the second test there, that's in sort of burst fire mode, you can see I'm getting reasonable amount of hits. If you full auto that, I worked out that the, you get nine bullets out before the gun then climbs above the entire wall. Now I'll come to that in a second, but here you can see I've put the bipod down, gone full auto, and the difference is unbelievable. I mean with the bipod off, you, you hardly any bullets are hitting. With the bipod on, you can go full auto and hit a duck's ass at 100 yards. It is extraordinary. And because the bipod now deploys a lot more accurately, what, the, what DICE are pretty much saying to you support guys with an LMG is slap the bipod on and win. Absolutely epic. I'll just walk over here and, and you can see for yourself. So on the left there you've got the full auto, hardly any bullets hit. Second along you've got you know, a controlled burst, you can see, reasonable. And the third and fourth, bipod on, um, win. Every bullet's pretty much within that square. I did further testing with the flash suppressor on and it took seven bullets to do the recoil instead of nine without. So it's a bit of an improvement with the flash suppressor. Stops a little bit of the vertical recoil. Now, moving on to helicopters, this is the Havoc. The controls of the Havoc, it was like a flying tank. It was a horrible piece of kit to fly. But as you can see here, it is highly maneuverable now. It's not quite on a power the Viper, but before the, the patch, you could not do this kind of thing in, in a Havoc. What I'm going to do now is flick over and split screen a section as I fly around in a Havoc and a Viper. Having done the comparison, the Viper is feels lighter, but the Havoc is just as manoeuvrable. The, Viper, the Viper's just got the edge over it, but um, the Havoc is, is well on a par with it now. You could actually... You know, you could actually say that these two um, helicopters are balanced with each other. As you can see, you can fly down the road in Caspian border, and it's all good. Wonderful, wonderful things for the patch. So here we are in the, in the Havoc, and I thought I'd do some testing on the light towers. Now, remember, light towers were the bane of anybody in the air. Now, you can actually take them clean off. And I'll show you a little bit more detail in a second, but essentially you can fly into the top section of these light towers and you either miss them or you take them with you and they stay they stay in that damaged state so you know no more bouncing off the top of the uh, the very top of light towers it isn't all good news though as i'll show you now i'll switch into third person mode just so that you can see what's really going on so here we are i'm just going to clip the top of that light tower now notice that only the top bit broke and if you actually look at the detail can you see that light tower there behind the top two sections are breakable the rest of it is not breakable and I can prove that as well because if I fly into this bit you can see I bounce off so although the top two sections are broken away if you fly into the rest of that you will actually um, you'll die pretty much the same and these haven't been changed at all so you bounce off those, though they do collapse. But if you fly into them at full speed, as I demonstrate now, the lamp posts, if you want to call them that, they're just the same as they were before. So there's, there's no no change there. Okay, so let's look at the minimap changes. If I zoom in on the minimap, you can see the minimap is pretty nice looking now. It's obviously you can switch it between different zoom modes on the PC. I'm not sure about console if they ever brought that in. But it, it's also got this kind of layered effect. You can switch different layers in. You can have the, the terrain map, a uh, structures map, or you can have a combined. One thing I do like, that hatch, that hashed area, the, the out-of-bounds zone. Now, that was 
a lot more difficult to see before the patch. Now it's wonderfully easy to see. And personally, I like this mode here where it combines terrain with the structures. Uh, I just find that the most useful. I'll probably keep it small, but you can switch it into big. Uh, the big sort of zoomed in if you really want to see what's going on around you. Um, but on the whole, that is a really nice change to the to the mini map. Excellent work, Dice. Absolutely love that. You couldn't ask for a better map than that, to be honest with you. Although the actual diamonds are arguably a bit big and in your face. <laughs> It'd be nice maybe to have some options to make those a little bit smaller sometimes. But otherwise, you know, nothing to grumble about there. And whilst I'm in a helicopter, it's worth noting that uh, the TV missile is unbelievably overpowered against land vehicles now. In general, I've found that tanks are quite brittle in, after the patch. They really are easy to take out with javelins and guided missile. But I'm going to switch over to the in-game chat for a second. You can listen to what's going on as I use the TV missile against uh, a few targets, some guys that were helping me do some tests. So I'll switch over now, then come back in a second. Yeah. <laughs> I'm moving yeah, to the it. middle of the field now. There's three vehicles there now. Two tanks and an AA. It's pretty hard to tell. I'm in the middle. I'm the one shooting at the DL yeah, yeah, now. That's insane. Did you destroy? Yeah. You okay. got a kill. The tank's gonna lop you down soon. Yeah, that's fine. What? That was in the turret. Yeah, so that's not good news for tanks at all. Um, reactive armor's the only thing that can help them out from a TV missile. I don't know. I think that tanks have taken a real beating in this patch. You know, one, one hit to disable with the javelin, two hit kill. It might be a little bit too far, I think. I mean, uh, I don't know. As for the tanks being effective on the battlefield, I mean, apart from being e quite easy to take out now, their armor doesn't seem to be terribly good. I'll switch back to the in-game chat and you'll see that uh, they can still take things out. Oh, heli, heli. Good night, sir. Who <laughs> killed the guys inside? The chopper is still intact. It's I don't know if you noticed or not, but that guy flared. Now, the problem I found here is when you're in the uh, chopper and you get that kind of beep, 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 locking noise, and then you get the continuous tone, he flared straight away. And the reason is because it's, it's very quick to lock on things now, uh, particularly with stingers and other air-to-air -air missiles. And he flared immediately. Now, the problem is it doesn't break the actual lock, so third seat of a tank just can just continuously lock on him, he flares, and then my I fire my guided shell, and it's game over. He has absolutely nothing he can do about that. And if he doesn't flare straight away, then he risks uh, an incoming stinger just, just literally within a couple of seconds hitting him. So, you know, choppers, <laughs> it's going to be a hard one, it really is. I can see them going down very quickly, a bit like tanks. This patch seems to have um, certainly given a, a bit of a, a beating to vehicles in general. I think it's a lot easier to take vehicles down than it was before. Speaking of taking vehicles down, RPGs can apparently one-shot helicopters. Luckily enough, I can prove that. I'll switch to the endgame chat for a second. I don't understand how their chopper is fast, just flying around fighting people. We take off and you straight up by jet before you... Oh, RPG one shot! <laughs> nice! You were saying about their chopper, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, just to prove that the patch did not get rid of any douchebags, in a second I get into a tank, which I don't know, but it's been c 4 I come back and I double teabag the guy just to take out some pleasurable revenge. Yeah, bitches, I know I'd be tank as well. What? Okay, yeah. so the tank on, on gas station was covered in C4. They just left it, waited. Here's this plant. 
If you told me you were going there, I'd have told you that. That's why I would do it. But you're like, oh, I've got your tank in there before you even fire a percent in, you were dead. Behind, behind, behind! Yeah, that's the bitch. See that? They're my balls, man. They're my balls in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, want some as well? Oh, come on, bitch. Failing right before the impact. Oh, yeah. That's... You can have my balls again. Come on. <laughs> Okay, that's all for now guys. I shall do some more testing over the next few days, get some more videos up, hopefully draw some conclusions, work out maybe some new loadouts, things that work, things that don't work, and get back to you on that. Give me a thumbs up please if you like the video. Take care guys, and I shall see you soon.